and welcome to another episode of Your One Black Friend. This is a midweek mini cast. Something new I decided to do in 2024. Although the year has not started yet, but I am going to go with the flow. Why, 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 why am I saying that the year has not started? The 2024 technically has not started yet. Well, because pick your calendar, right? I think we are coasting off of the Gregorian calendar who has decided to start the year in January, but it's not a new year because we are still in the middle of winter. A new year does not start until the spring. So that will be in March, right? That's when new things come forth. That's when you see life coming in again, the new season, the new year, right? Spring is the first season of a new year, not in the middle (laughs) of winter, but that's okay. I still will say happy new year because, well, When in Rome, do as the Romans do. I digress. Today's midweek episode, Minicast, is brought to you by the TV show from Apple called Silo. I just finished the first season yesterday and I thought it was very interesting. It had Common in it, Common singer slash actor, good role he's playing so he's, he's he's moody and he's broody and he's, he he does it well he does it well although i don't like the some of the things that he does but that's okay he's still kind of likable for some weird reason and maybe the weird reason is that i have a tendency to empathize with people who are cast as quote unquote villains not saying he's the villain but he does do some shady things in the show go ahead and watch on apple if you feel so inclined so it is set I believe, somewhere in a dystopian future of Earth. There's only 10,000 human beings left and they are in silos and they've lived in silos for a very long time because of whatever apocalypse that happened that drove the survivors underground and they've just stayed there because they believe that the atmosphere is contaminated. Um... And without giving too much away, I'm watching the show and I'm thinking, holy shit, is Earth some sort of silo? In the show, they aren't aware of the existence of cameras. They're living kind of rudimentary lives. Again, they've gone kind of scaled back a bit. So they still have access to some technology like servers. But the average person living within the silo is not aware of the existence of a recording device. They cannot fathom that there could be a technology that could be recording them. Now, this is just a thought experiment. I'm not trying to point you to any conclusions. It's just, I just like brain candy. I just like to think. I just like to ask what if to expand the mind. So it's a mind expanding question. Is Earth a silo for another civilization? And could there be a technology that we can't even conceptualize, that we can't even begin to imagine that maybe whatever civilization created what we call Earth, they were more technologically capable than we are now. I mean, we are now slowly moving towards a technological singularity. Everybody's talking about AI now and its capabilities, but that's relatively recently. I think the first email they said was sent in 1970, in the 1970s, this is when the first email was sent. But that's relatively recent. If you go back a hundred years ago, if you ask the average person, you know, about being able to FaceTime and call somebody across the continent, across the globe in real time and have a conversation with them, they wouldn't be able to like conceptualize that. What is it in a hundred years it's going to blow our fucking mind. I always say, like, I'm not technically always late. It's just the technology hasn't caught up to my expectations of humanity's capabilities. I talk about this in my book, So You're Living in a Simulation. Is retrocausal reincarnation possible? Why wouldn't it be if time is not linear, right? So I always joke to my friends that I don't have a problem with showing up on time. I just reincarnated back to the 2020s from a period in time when teleportation 
it was possible. So if somebody says, hey, can you be here too? My mind just shoots for two to get ready by as opposed to make sure that, that you have enough time so that you can drive to where you're going. And so my go my going joke is that, well, the reason why my, my brain has that habit of doing that is because in the future that I reincarnated from, teleportation was a thing. And so if you had to be somewhere at two o'clock, then you just had to be ready by two and then teleport to where you needed to go. All right, that, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> that's just one of my many excuses. But what is gonna blow our minds in a hundred years? The way cell phone and all the other technology robots would blow the minds of somebody in the year 1923 or even 200 years ago, 1823. What do we have in existence now? Rocket ships, spaceships, airplanes. What capabilities do we have now that would have exploded the minds of people in the 1820s? And I'll ask yourself the same thing for us 200 years from now. And just as in the show, the individuals within the silo are being monitored in order to kind of squash rebellions, could there be things that would be the equivalent of recording devices, monitoring devices that are right in front of our eyes on a daily basis, but because we don't have like an expectation for what it is, like we can't perceive it. Now in the show, their cameras are housed behind mirrors, right? And as I'm watching it, I thought about mirrors themselves. There's some weird thing that happens with mirrors in the sense of that when you look in a mirror, the, the mirror is actually supposed to reflect everything, including your reflection. So when you look in a mirror, technically what you're seeing should not be happening. Because it inverts everything, it should also reflect you upside down. But for whatever weird reason, mirrors show you head on. Like when you look in a mirror, you know, you're not flipped over. And it's this weird sort of thing that people don't really have a, like an explanation for. They're like, yeah, it's weird the mirrors do that. And then they just leave it. And I was thinking like, what if, like, <laughs> this is just my brain. But I'm laughing, but I'm not like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, ha ha ha. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, what if? There's a reason why mirrors freak people out. But what if, let me finish my thought. What if? Like in the past, there was a much more technologically advanced civilization than what we have now, right? And they developed, you know, weapons of mass destruction, wiped out the majority of human beings, and then sent the rest of our ancestors into the silos, right? And then our ancestors emerged from the silos um, through like caves and things like that, and then started the world again. But their descendants held on to the knowledge of the world before what we perceive of as civilization now. And, and so these descendants, that's their job to sort of like maintain the knowledge of this past world, but they hold the technology and they monitor and suppress things to keep people from finding out like what is outside of earth, like what is in outer space. Is outer space a place where we actually cannot go or is there something else out there beyond what we've been told? Because we just accept that like, it's just earth. And we're just told that like, yeah, all the other planets are uninhabited, right? We look and it's like, okay, well, Mars, there's nobody there. Venus, there's nobody there. It's just us. But sometimes I go like, what if it's not? Like, how the fuck do we know? Beyond just what we're told by people who chronically lie to us, how do we know? How do we know? And how do we know like our mirrors aren't monitoring devices? I do find it weird that a lot of celebrities, and you can look this up, a lot of celebrities like have issues with mirrors. Like I think Nicole Kidman, they said that like she would put mirrors in front of her or she would put a blanket over all the mirrors in her house. And that was really strange. And then you have sort of weird like um, urban myths, urban legends around mirrors, like Bloody Mary and stuff like that. And just overall, if you stare in a mirror like too long, Shit freaks me out. Like, I don't know. Mirrors freak me out. Like, I don't look in the mirror a lot. Like, I, I look in the mirror to, like, do my makeup in the morning, brush my teeth and everything like that. Maybe, like, pluck my hairs or whatever. Um, <laughs> like, my brows. And then that's it. Um, because sometimes there's something a bit mesmerizing about mirrors. And I wonder, like, if it's more than what we perceive. Like, if there is a technology within the pain that's just sort of, like, activated once you create a mirror then it becomes a monitoring device. And so that's where they monitor, they monitor us through these mirrors. Look, at the, at the very least, this would make for good fiction. So if you're listening to this 
and you're like, oh, that's interesting. Write the story. Write the story and feature me. I don't know. That'd be cool. Uh, I want to read the story. I want to read, even if you do a short story and you publish it, tag me on it. I'm on Medium now. I think you can find me at jolie.artist. If you're interested, there's an article coming soon. Back to Mars and Venus. I have this weird affinity for the planet Venus and I don't know why. Actually, both planets. I find the concept of these planets, Venus and Mars, very fascinating. Mars, red planet, which tons of sci-fi books have written about, like Mars being inhabited. Um, and then something happened and they got sent underground. So a lot of sci-fi write about Martians being underground, which like from us here, like how would we know? Even if, <laughs> even if we somehow found a way to send, you know, a, a person, human beings on the planet of Mars would feel relatively deserted the same way if you landed on Earth and you didn't understand the concept of silos or if you didn't know something bad happened that sent people underground, you'd look and you'd think, well, this you know planet was deserted. And so when I let my mind drift, I sometimes think about Mars and are there Martians that are human, humanoids? Um, and then if something happened, maybe there was a war between Mars and Venus. It's definitely going sci-fi, but why not, right? Maybe there was a war between Mars and Venus, right? And then, um, and then the survivors were sent down to Earth, and Earth is the silo, right? And all we see is a simulation. Um, on the show Silo, there is like there a lot of there's a lot of play with like visualization um, of what the people perceive, and they see. Um, people who hold on, I need to move. Um, people who go who decide to go outside, they're usually sent off to their deaths. But before you know it happens, they see what appears to be like a paradise. But the people inside the silo, they're seeing gray, right? So there's a discrepancy discrepancy rather between what the people who leave the silo see right? This illusion of a, of a paradise and the people who stay inside, um, like the majority of people who stay inside. And once again, we talk about simulation hypothesis and holographic universe and things like that. And it begs the question, like, is everything we see, the sun, the trees, all of this, is this a grand, you know, simula simulation? And what is it truly hiding? You know, you guys should watch the show. Honestly, and just just for the mental exercise, it's one of the things I love about fiction. I, I do read a lot of nonfiction. You know, I try to keep up with what's going on, you know, in, in theoretical physics and you know, philosophy is my favorite. Obviously, you guys know um, the esoteric, Eastern mysticism, all of that. But every once in a while, when I do watch something fictional, it just gets the gears going. And it's always just fun to sort of play with this idea of what if, you know, I said this errant thought. Um, like inverting everything. Uh, what if Earth was actually Venus, and but we're told it's Earth, right? And what if, like, once again, to go back in this past civilization, their culture was once you sort of overtook a planet, then you renamed it. I mean, that's what we kind of do, right? Like, we think about um, America. America was not called America by the people who lived here. It was called, it, the name was changed Um I can't remember who it was, some, but it was a European that named this place America. And I was thinking, like, imagine Earth was actually a planet of most, like, of females, like, predominantly females, right? And let's call that Venus, right? I'm really leaning into that book, Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. But once again, this is just mental exercises, something to think about, something to play with in your head. What if, right? And so women lived and existed in this sort of beautiful planet um, and they replicated um, through the process of uh, parthenogenesis. This is something that some reptiles are capable of, which is a asexual reproduction. So they just replicated themselves. They didn't need the male to fertilize their egg. They could self-fertilize. And then let's say the males looked down on Venus and saw that women were beautiful and then they came down and set up this like patriarchy that we have now um, just through sheer force you know, in power. And then they, they, they brought about the subjugation of females that we see now. These are the things that I think about on a daily fucking basis. So now it's in your head, something to think about. Um, but what if Earth isn't actually Earth? What if Earth was in fact Venus and we're living on the planet Venus this whole time, but then when the Martians came and sort of took over, they renamed it Earth? I don't know. There's this why not? <laughs> so I, I was fascinated by the world before our own. 
You know, some some people think about this linear progression that we're supposed to get technologically more advanced in time, perhaps. But I also look back and when we talk about cycles, right? We are in the dead of winter and yet people are saying happy new year. But eventually there's something new starts, right? Every new beginning is some other beginnings end, right? And so we are seemingly beginning this, it's called the AI revolution is sort of, um, is a theme. But we look around and we see that everything sort of cycles, you know, in this, in this plane. What makes you think? And I've talked about this in So You're Living in a Simulation. Um, what makes you so certain that this is our first time that humanity may have achieved AI, achieved the technological advances that we're seeing now on a different level, perhaps, just in a way that like some springs may, you know, may be slightly different than other springs and some summers might be slightly hotter. But it's still the same sort of concept. But it's a cycle. Like it's got to be a cycle. If you think about how long this, this, you know, the universe itself has existed and how long we as human beings have said to have, have existed, who knows? Retro causal sort of technology, like what came, what technology existed, could have existed before us? What cultures could have existed before us? What, what, what could be monitoring us right now, hurting us, shepherding us? And that we wouldn't even know. And what limitations are being imposed? What artificial limitations, technological wise, technologically speaking, are being imposed on us so that we don't know or understand what whatever it is that could be monitoring us? I'm looking at you, UFOs and UAVs, right? All of a sudden the government's coming out and saying, yes, they're real and we don't know what it is. Well, okay, well, well what is it? They, they kind of, they have to suspect right? But if you go back, even in art, you see that UFOs have been depicted throughout like different centuries. They could very well be humans just like us from just a more advanced civilizations that came from prior descendants of those people who are in the know, so to speak. Uh, they have like these bugs that um, government agencies use that they're literal bugs. They've engineered robots that look like insects and then they use it to kind of spy on people. And it, it kind of begs the question, like, could a mechanism like that have been created or by civilizations that were advanced in the past and are sort of set about, you know, in our homes, this like that innocuous things like a fucking silverfish. What the fuck? Those things are like recording devices or <laughs> something. At the very least, alien. Um, it's, I, tongue in cheek sci fi, but also food for thought because that's what we do on this podcast. Um, just stuff for you to just like just expand your brain and think about. Um, who knows? I, you guys have heard me talk about um, Robert Anton Wilson and how he talks about not allowing yourself to get trapped by belief systems. So when I talk about these things, I do it, you know, with an open mind, tongue in cheek as a mental exercise with that understanding that, you know, I won't know while I'm in here. I can only suppose. And I've had people ask me, like, do you ever get qu tired of all the questions? And my response is like, no, no, I don't. Um, and I also don't get tired of sharing the ideas or discussing the ideas or perceiving reality differently than what we've been programmed to perceive because it keeps my mind open and it keeps the game. It makes this world um, much more interesting than just working nine to five and talking dying. You know what I mean? And then thinking that that's all that there is to life. I, I like to think beyond what we've been programmed to think because the world is even more interesting, fascinating when you start to perceive reality in a way that's outside of the box in which we are mentally sort of confined in. These are discussions that I think are worth having. I've gotten quite a few emails from like philosophy professors and um, physics professors. And you're, you come to find out that people in those fields are having these sort of ideas and having these sort of discussions and are really curious as to, you know, what's really going on um, because uh, more and more their, their findings are supporting what seems to be the surreal. So we might as well think beyond the real, <laughs> so to speak. Right. All right. So 
like I said, mini cast. I'm not going to drone on. Um, look out for full length episodes. They're all ready to go and they're coming soon. All right. Thanks for listening. Woo!